Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Durbert with my lovely wife, Alberta Durbert, and just delighted to be able to share with you in the truths of God's Word once again. Luke 137 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And it's April 12th, marvelous Monday. Did we have a time last week? We had a time. You know, it, it, uh, but we're still having a time. To me, that's 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 the funnest being in meetings like that. You know, just watching the word be expounded and so we just God have to moved. keep having more meetings. Well, I believe when this thing when this thing blows open, this end time yeah, revival, it's already blowing open. That the church doors be open twenty four seven. You know, and meetings all the have time. Have to be. Have to be. So, so the young legs around here better better be ready step to preach because I ain't preaching every night. They better step <laughs> up. That's Hallelujah. Right. But it's a marvelous Monday, April 12th. How are you doing today? I'm doing marvelous. Yeah. Today. <laughs> well, we're glad you're able to join us over the next half hour. And uh, uh, if you're new to this program, uh, we're teaching out of the devotional that we wrote years ago called Awake to Righteousness, it's New Creation Realities. It's a, it's a game changer when uh, you begin to understand not that you're just forgiven, but you are a new creation. Yes. Oh, I mean, that's, that is what it's all about. Without that, without that knowledge. You know, you interesting just, you enough. You said a boring Christian. It, it doesn't say if any man being Christ, he's a new being. No. Creation. Creation. That requires the creator. That does. To do something. And if you look at how creation. he creates things around us for his prized creation, mm -hmm. you understand we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. And see, getting our minds renewed to this powerful, powerful truth is uh, something it's that... It's endless. It's really endless. Yeah, but once... But once, you got to get a hold once of Once you start getting your mind renewed to it and you, and you start... What happens is, is you start slipping mm. out of being a... In, operating in a carnal mind out into a spiritual mind. You start slipping. It's not all of a sudden, boom, it's, it's there. Boom. And so you start studying God's word, particularly about uh, righteousness, that you're in right standing with God. And it, it first starts out with, oh, really? That's what the Bible says. Then it's like, oh, my. And then you start memorizing it, you know, and you start thinking about it. And uh, then you, you try to apply it and but you're so used to the carnal way the old man that you you, you tend to slip back into it but if you'll stay with it mm -hmm. your mind continues to uh, be transformed by uh, the supernatural word of God's word and so all of powerful. a sudden you start thinking spiritually to be spiritually minded is life, life and death and life what happens is I like that. Thank you. Hallelujah. That's why. That's why. Our that's why you might help me, right? Uh, Life and rest. What in happens peace. then is you start slipping yeah. into your spiritual mindedness. You'll be you'll be uh, operating carnally. Uh, f for instance, you could be on your job, and uh, which requires your. Uh, carnal skills and you're doing that and you mess up and you're like oh man the boss is going to be and you slip over into your spiritual mindedness well what what uh where god wants to take us uh and it's left up to us is to where we're walking with our mind stayed on him walking in this spiritual uh mindedness mm -hmm. You know, walking in the spirit, and now uh, you're not. You won't slip, slip like that. Mm -hmm. You'll you'll always be aware. Wait a minute, and and not because of something that you goofed up in, but who you really are. Yes. So, anyways, it is Monday, and we're gonna kick this week off April twelfth. Okay, our uh, 
scripture verses from Isaiah 46 and verse 12. Hearken unto me, you stout-hearted, who I like that, that are far from righteous, stout-hearted. That's a heavy-duty word. Stubborn. Stout-hearted. He says, hearken unto me, you stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. He didn't really say far from him. Far from, you, you don't know your righteousness. See, that's the whole thing yes. about uh, man-made religion. Mm. There's a lot of good people that are yes. actually born again, but they are, they have, they're captured uh, by religion. this, these doctrines of, I'm just an old sinner saved and by grace. I'm you. so unworthy. Yeah. Well, that, you know, you, yeah, you've they been get mad taught at that. You. you know, I remember one what time. What do you mean, righteous? You're righteous. I was out preaching the streets back in the early days, and I come across this older lady, and she's sitting there waiting on the bus to come by, I believe it was. And, you know, we struck up a conversation, and she born again filled with Holy Ghost. I said, well, this ought to be a good conversation, <laughs> right? And I didn't know all this, but I knew that we were kings and priests, you know, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and I didn't know. Uh, and boy, you talk about uh, making somebody upset and mad, that religious devil. I mean, right, I'm sitting there, and she just seemed like this older woman that, you Sweet know, that love. would be your grandma that make you an apple pie and, we're, we're sitting there talking about Jesus, and just as soon as I brought this up, man, I mean, it's like, you know, Dr. Jekyll and, and, and Mr. Hyde, I mean, just a total transformation, and she got fiercely mad. I had to get up, you know, and she'd just run me off. Well, I had the same situation. Yeah. I mean, years back when President Trump was yeah. uh, first elected. Yeah. That sweet little Christian... Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I got all excited. I hadn't seen her in a while. I see her in Kroger, and I'm all excited, thinking she's excited. And she start railing me about how... Yeah, don't go in all that. Yeah, whoa. But I was like... Stout-hearted. I, so that tells me somebody that understands righteousness is tender-hearted. That's good. Yeah. See, let's read this. That's good. Okay, here we have a basic righteousness principle. The people who are far from righteousness are stout-hearted. We don't use that word in our everyday language, but we do use the word stubborn. Stubborn, boy, I used to be that, you know. I was delivered from that spirit. Praise God. Stubborn is a very good synonym for stout-hearted, and it gives us a better understanding of what this verse is saying. Notice, it's a heart condition, stubborn-hearted. That's really good. When we drift away from our right standing with God in Christ Jesus, our hearts begin to harden to our new creation realities. Wow, we were just talking about mm -hmm. a situation like that. Our minds lose the effectiveness to think spiritually, boy, listen to this, people. Whew. I say that's when you slip out of mm. your faith rituals. <laughs> and we become stubborn whew, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We no longer operate in the Spirit. Or I could even say we don't no longer operate in faith. Sure. It's a spirit of faith. Same, same. Mm -hmm. Can't separate those two. Mm -hmm. um, that's when we start, ooh, well, you're going to say it. Well, this is we back know, full. Yeah. We no longer operate in the spirit, but rather in the flesh. Stubbornness, wow. Well, I, you know, God's answering me and just what I was talking about to you on the way in here. You know? Yeah. Stubborn. Let me let me let me say something to those of you that are uh, watching, same. viewing. On purpose, we don't we don't study or read uh, these uh, yeah. devotionals. We pray uh, before we start recording 
for divine inspiration. So when Mama Alberta is saying, wow, just I, we were just talking about this on the way in. We didn't, we didn't sit at home and read, no. you know, Monday through Friday and, and try to think of what we're going to talk about. Wow, we, I, want it, we want it to be spontaneous. And, you know, it's funny because I was telling Pastor, talking about a situation uh, about people that we know and love. And, and I was talking about this on the way in and, and Pastor said, OK, Albert, you know, we're not we're not going to go there and here. God is answering hmm. just Good. what I was talking well, read about. That, read, read that second paragraph again. When we drift away, it's <laughs> what I was talking about. When we drift, not me, <laughs> mm -hmm. other people. When we drift away from our right standing with God in Christ Jesus, our hearts begin to harden to our new creation realities. That's you got to just meditate on that. Our minds lose the effectiveness. This is very powerful. To think spiritually. See, we don't we when we get away from spending time with God, what a lot of people always say, you know, we, we're legalistic. How we, you know, every morning getting up at a certain time, mm -hmm. way before and you have to. Mm -hmm. And we, we pray, we pray in tongues and praise the Lord, get in the word. And people say, well, that's, you know, that's uh, bondage. getting, yeah, it's bondage, it's legalistic. I even had a dear sister of mine at one time years ago say, you know, it's like, uh, it's like a setting aside a time to make love to my husband. Well, that's goofy. You know, that's being, that's like, real goofy. That's real goofy. <laughs> yeah. And so anyway. Uh, but when you when you stop that, and you still think you're you still think you're in the spirit. You're getting busy with uh, everything else, but you you're think losing, you're losing yeah. your ability yes. to meditate. Exactly. Come on, keep reading. Yeah, you know? I know. Our minds lose the effectiveness to think spiritually, and we become stubborn to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We know longer operate in the spirit but rather in the flesh and I could say in the soul also right there there are two of a kind sometimes stubbornness will justify us in our own eyes wow is it true in this condition we are prime targets for religion oh boy how many times I are you going to read I can't help this Frustration is a sure thing when we don't know our righteousness. So a compromised life of sheer, stubborn, religious exercises become the norm. Oh, boy, honey, this is... Religious folks are very stubborn. And now we know why. They're far from their right standing with God. Many born-again believers are living lives far from righteousness. They are saved. They have accepted Jesus. They simply haven't, have, haven't learned their righteousness. Though they may have been fired up about Jesus at first, without righteousness being revealed to them, they end up far from righteousness with stubborn hearts. I have to read that again because I know many cases, and I'm going to read that again. Search your hearts, people. What does the word say? Uh, that you that you be in the faith. Uh, well, search your hearts, actually. That you be in the faith. That Examine yourself. Examine what you yourselves, mean? yes. But that's so important. Are you going to ever <laughs> read this? I can't help it. Look at you. I mean, you made it every, all this. God's making all this come alive. Um, religious folk are very stubborn, and now we know why. They're far from their right standing with God. Many born-again believers are living lives far from righteousness. They are saved. They have accepted Jesus. They simply haven't learned their righteousness. 
though they might have been fired up about Jesus at first, without righteousness being revealed to them, they end up far from righteousness with stubborn hearts. They just weren't taught, or they became frustrated and stubborn as a result. Watch the love of the Father in this scripture. He says, hearken unto me. Father God is still reaching out to the ones afar off to bring them near once again. What a God, a way to righteousness and stay near. See, oh, that, that's, what God. that's what happened to me, Alberta, when God began to reveal righteousness to me. I was raised in the United Methodist Church, nothing against United Methodist people. They're loving people. They love God with what they know, but we were never, ever taught righteousness, never. And and uh, we were in one of the, well, it was the biggest United Methodist Church in the state of Kentucky, and the pastor was a theologian uh, internationally known, and, uh, you know, in the town where uh, you had the Methodist uh, college and seminary, I mean, if any, if any place you're going to get doctrinalized, it was right there. Never heard about righteousness. You know what I heard? Our righteousness is as filthy rags. All of sin and come short of the glory of God. Right? And they there's keep none, saying There's we're none all righteous. No, not one. So listen to this now. Listen. When, when I got saved... In 1988, from 14 years of drug addiction, alcoholism, criminal activity, just a total mess. Me and you were in the middle of a divorce, all that mess that we were in. I still had that. That's how deep-rooted. There's none righteous, no, not one. Of course. Uh, and, 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 you know, I could find it in the Bible. Yeah, well, the Bible says that. All of sin comes short of glory. Well, the Bible says that. You know, all of our... Righteousness is as filthy rags. The Bible said that, right? So through 14 years of drug addiction, 14 years of alcoholism, when this righteousness was being revealed, I rebelled against it. I was stubborn. I said, no, 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 no. There's none righteous, no, not one. Mm -hmm. Arguing you're, you're, with the Holy Ghost. You're afraid to teach it. Yeah. Arguing. Stubborn. Yeah. Why? My heart was far from it. And plus, the last thing I wanted to be was goofy. I didn't want to uh, get teaching some uh, false doctrine. But then, as as hearken unto me with the love of God, God began to reveal to me, yes, there's none righteous, no, not one, until you're born again. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, until you're born again. All of our uh, righteousness, filthy rags, all your attempts at cleaning yourself up is just like a filthy rag trying to clean something up with a filthy rag. It won't work, right? And Try everything the dirty started to fall in place. And then when I saw 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that Father God hath made Jesus who knew no sin sin for us that we could be made the righteousness of God in him. And then Romans 5, 17, those which receive the gift of righteousness yeah. shall reign in life. Yeah. I said, well, where have I been? Where have I been? See, and my heart, the stubbornness. And then, see, I didn't even realize that I had that uh, rooted down in me, that religious root. But God's word rooted it out and in its place put the new creation reality. Uh, and it keeps coming up in me. Now, we were living in the camper, and this is probably before you started teaching yeah. righteousness, right? Do you remember I told you one day I was praying and the Lord said, Alberta, uh, we're going to go into your toy box. Yeah. And... We're going to pull out a toy. And I'm thinking, toy box and toy. Mm -hmm. 
And it's, it was a teddy bear. Mm -hmm. And I never was a child that walked around with a teddy bear. I always walked around with a dish towel. I would suck my thumb and have the dish towel. So that was my like security blanket. Mm -hmm. So when he said teddy bear. You were like Linus. I knew, <laughs> yeah. I knew what he was saying because teddy bears were always like a security. Sure. Yeah, kids would drag them around. Go I mean, to sleep adults, with them. yeah, adults would still, they travel and they take their teddy bear. Mm -hmm. You know, people till today still do that, you know. And so I knew it was something very dear, yeah. yes. And he said, it's a teddy bear and its name is Stubborn. I was like, whoa. I remember this. And so I, what he was saying is that this was something I, I held on to. I was very stubborn. I know, and you know, um, I mean, my mom used to say I was, you know, I, I just, in anything, if you wanted to go somewhere and I didn't, well, I, I'd fight it. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I don't really want to go there and eat or something, you mm -hmm. know, or why do we have to do that? You know, mm -hmm. and sometimes that still tries to creep in, but I had a stubbornness that God delivered me from that day mm -hmm. and, and, and see that was the last thing and he knew I had to get rid of that oh my you know before I could go any further especially accepting righteousness stubborn stubborn uh, you can be headstrong but this is talking about stout hearted, hearted. when that's when a that, heart issue yeah when that gets down in your heart like that it will it will drive you. What well, says you're far, far from from, from from the work that Jesus did in the new so in the new creation, uh, born again life. And so, when uh, we get born again, I understand. You know, somebody may be listening right now. This first time they're hearing about righteousness and they're like oh, I don't know if I want to deal with that you know uh, you know because yeah. I've always heard yeah exactly. that righteousness uh, see there, you know righteousness, righteousness is things you do a lot you, of people you're supposed say to live right you're self righteous you're 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 Ooh. getting two words confused righteousness and holiness mm -hmm. righteousness which is right standing holiness is right living mm -hmm. And you can't live right without first standing right. Right, right. And the right. only way you right. can stand right is by God making you, creating you right. Yeah. Then once you are created right and you're standing in front of God right, now you have the ability. You have the ability. It doesn't mean you're going to be... Uh, perfect at it at, at first, but you have the perfect, uh, you have the ability to now live this right standing out loud in front of everybody and start living right. And uh, righteousness basically is taught uh, to do right. You know, I, I hear prominent preachers, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, and then they'll stop and say, and and uh, that means uh, doing what's right, and 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 some versions of the Bible yeah. will say doing that right. Well, yeah, that ultimately it. doing right is out of the holiness that righteousness affords yeah. uh, the believer, right? But righteousness in itself is you when you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. One moment you're standing before him, wrong, going to split hell open. You accept Jesus as your Savior. He creates in you a new heart. And you're born again. And where you were standing in front of him, wrong. Now you're standing in front of him, right. right. But the only thing is, you don't know that. Right. You just, you just know, hey, preacher man said I was forgiven or... Uh, something's different. I, I see things different and so on and so forth. We are out of time. Boy, I tell you what, this is the way to start the week, though, isn't it? Awesome. Was that, was that, I mean, boy, that got me fired up right awesome. there. See, it, you know, uh, those of you 
and are listening, you have the ability to go back and listen to this over and over again. That, that right there is a powerful, powerful way to start the week. And uh, any kind of uh, teddy bear you got in your toy box, oh, wow, that... uh, you might want to let God deal with that because yeah, right uh, <laughs> stubbornness, rebellion is as, is as the spirit of witchcraft. of witchcraft, you know. And the last thing we want is to be stubborn towards the things oh, of God, especially God. you're fighting who you are. <laughs> it's true. That's that. That's the last thing you want to do. But anyways, uh, we'll Mighty see. The goodness of God. Yeah. yeah. Well, hearken unto me. Yeah, that's so uh, Our good. time's gotten away from us. Uh, really. And we're just glad uh, to have started the week this way. I mean, that, I'm fired up. Me too. Ecclesiastes Gosh. chapter eight, verse four says, "Where the word of a king is, there, there is power. power. Be a blessing." Power of Faith programs are available on YouTube 24-7, so you can watch from anywhere at any time. Search for Power of Faith on YouTube or go to youtube.com forward slash power of faith. Subscribe and click the bell to make sure you're notified whenever new episodes are posted. If you missed the episode, or you just want to go back and watch it over and over again, the Power of Faith YouTube channel is there for you.